Sales Team and Tiffany again. Welcome. It's so good that you could join us for another Oceans mm -hmm. Online. We hope you had a fantastic week. Uh, as a community, we're in the middle of a time of prayer and fasting. So that's uh, putting aside things that we think are important to us and feed us in some ways and just really prioritizing God mm -hmm. and uh, being intentional in seeking Him and reading His Word. Yeah. Um, if you haven't started it yet, feel free to join us right now. And if you have, well done. Keep it up. Uh, let's just really um, yeah, press in and trust God together for breakthrough and fresh revelation. Yeah. You know, although fasting can be hard, giving up things can be hard, there's also a great joy in it because you get to see the breakthrough that God brings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember the last few years we've been doing this as a church, Wow, I mean, in the services and yeah. everything, the anointing, the presence of God is so strong um, in, in, a, in a new and special way because everyone's out there that we're fasting, that we come together, bringing that revelation, that closeness with yeah. God, and it's just the life and the joy flowing out of everyone. And oh man, it's just great. I really love it. Actually, you know, I'm reading the book of Acts at the moment. It makes me think of the early church and their. Um, you know, they're always meeting together, they're praying, they're seeking God, they're worshipping. And wow, God's doing miracles, people are getting saved. Oh, it just makes me so excited to see uh, what's going to come out of this time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even for us personally, we've been uh, praying every night instead of running to entertainment. Uh, and it's been really good and encouraging because it not only um, builds our faith, but I think we find that it also creates a bond between us that's a bit deeper because we get to hear each other's heart we get to stand with one another in our struggle and trust god for things for our, for us individually but also for our family but on top of that we get to hear what's on god's heart and pray for things that are not even related to us and being able to um, yeah be in expectancy for um, the answers that god will bring out of this time yeah that's right speaking of prayer I would love to pray for us now. Um, Pastor Norm's going to come up next and bring us a word on the theme uh, that we're in at the moment as a church, which is not afraid. I've just been so blessed yeah. by the messages that have been coming out. Um, yeah, just the encouragement to be in faith. And so, yeah, I'd love to pray for us now uh, before we hear from Pastor Norm. Lord God, thank you so much that you are so good, you are so loving and that you are real in our lives. And I pray that uh, as Pastor Norm brings us a word today, that you know, your reality, your words, you would speak to each and every one that is watching, that is listening, and that you would yeah, just give Pastor Norm the words that you wanted to speak to us. Help us to hear, to understand, and to respond to you, God. Amen. Amen. See you See after. after. Welcome. It's great that you can join us from wherever you are in Oceans Online. Our theme has been Not Afraid, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you another message coming out of the Bible, some instruction from the Bible that helps us and equips us for life, particularly in the area of being not afraid, being courageous in life and willing to step into all that God has for us. And so uh, we've taken uh, a look at the Bible and what I've noticed is that in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the most re repeated phrase is fear not or have no fear or do not be afraid or be not afraid. So what it indicates to us is that fear is one of the primary issues that we face and the Bible is right there helping us to understand what to do about it. Uh, with COVID and 
the disturbing events that have also unfolded over this period of time. We've also discovered that life can change so quickly, personally and worldwide. And so uh, from what I can see, fear has gone up to a whole nother level. Um, for example, during a particularly difficult 2020, Bible searchers soared online. Many are concerned about their future, so it's especially significant now, and they're chasing after answers. And so we find that people are trying to access scripture passages addressing fear, healing, and justice. One popular Bible app saw searches increase by 80% in 2020, totaling nearly over 6 million worldwide. Do you want to know what the top ranked Bible passage that people tried to access was? It was from Isaiah 41.10. It begins, do not fear. You know, there's something about fear. I don't know if you've noticed that it has power. It causes us to take care. It's good. It protects us in that sense. But fear is not okay when it overflows its boundaries and invades and paralyzes and holds us captive. You know, when fear and anxiety and worry become an emotional habit, which they can, it really does stunt our faith and our willingness to do the adventure of life. You know, uh, when long-term fear takes its toll, if it lives with us spilling out of its boundaries and it affects our, our physical, our mental, our emotional and our spiritual health. Fifthly, you know, uh, when you read the Bible, evil powers use various fears to enslave and dominate us. So in many cases, fear is not okay. And really, I think that's what the Bible is addressing. The fear that spilled over its boundaries and is impacting us in wrong ways. It is important to know that God cares about you and your struggles with fear. And he's given us great and precious promises so that we can overcome fear. So today we're going to look at one of those passages. In fact, that most searched passage from Isaiah 41.10. So let me read that to you. Isaiah 41.10 says this, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, when you look at this verse, you see that there are two commands and five reasons that support those commands. So what we have to remember, of course, is a command is probably the strongest order that can be given, say, in the military services. And in the Bible, it's the same. A command is an authoritative order given from someone in authority and obedience is expected. These two commands come from God, the highest authority in the universe. So you can see that we really need to take note of commands when God gives them to him. To ignore them is sin. So the two commands that are given in this passage are do not fear and do not anxiously look about you. You know, as always in the Bible, there are reasons for commands. Commands don't just hang in the air for no basis and no reality. If God commands us to do something, then he has very good reasons to give us that command. And so when you see the command is do not fear and do not be anxious about where your help is coming from, then we can see that fear is a big deal. It's a really big deal in our lives. We struggle with fear every day. So overcoming fear, according to the Bible, really means to not allow fear so to dominate your thinking processes and the decisions that you make in life that you're fear-driven. Uh, you know, in the hands of evil people and evil spirits, fear is a tool to control people. You know also that fear opposes faith and prevents us from wholly trusting God. So fear is important. It's important that we deal with it. And it's important to know that power comes from God to you when you take 
his command seriously to not be afraid. So let's have a look at those five supports or reasons, things that undergird God's commandment not to be afraid. And so here are the five reasons. The first one is, for I am with you. And it comes out of that scripture, do not fear, for I am with you. So the first thing we would take out of this is that you're not alone. God wants you to know you are not alone. I am with you. So you know when you wake up at night after a horrible nightmare, God is with you. God is for you. And so sometimes when we feel really alone, then we're most subject to fear. We're most subject to feeling uh, like so insecure and we'll do weird stuff to actually try and protect ourselves. And there's lots of examples when you see people, uh, work, the outworking of their personalities, the outworking of how they do relationships, the outworking even of um, how they live. So much of it is them coping with fear. Now, I find it interesting that some people try to deal with fear by buying a small cross or they buy an amulet. And an amulet, of course, is a piece of jewelry that's meant to ward off evil spirits. Or they uh, may buy a little statue and put it in their room designed to stop evil spirits or any disease coming upon them. Or they may develop some sort of a prayer mantra that they find somewhere where they say it over and over and over uh, to ward off evil and to curb or settle down their fearful hearts. But, you know, God has not given us any of those answers. And if you're using some of those, I've got a really good uh, solution for you. God has not given answers like this. God has given himself to you. He said, I will be with you. And so at any time of night or day, any circumstance you find yourself in, you can call upon God because he is right there. He's with you. That's the promise of God. The second answer that he's given us is I am your God. And it comes from that part in the, in the passage where it says, do not look anxiously about you for I am your God. The emphasis here is that I am your God. Surely I love you. Surely I am for you. When you're in trouble, of course you can look to me. Uh, I see two things coming out of this. The first thing is that if I have problems with my pipes, water pipes in my home, I call a plumber. If I have trouble with the electricity, electrical wires or switches, I call an electrician. When I have trouble with fear and I have trouble in my life, I call a God. That's his expectation here. Don't fear. I'm here. I'm with you. I am your God. The second thing that's worthy of note here about God is he's insisting really that he cares for you, that he loves you, that you're valuable to him. And I thought I'd pause and look at another passage just to draw that out. And so that comes from Isaiah 43, 1. Reading from the Message Bible, it says this, Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name, your mind. So you know, when you look at the idea of redeemed, because here God is in this scripture underlining certain things so you understand how valuable you are to him, how much he loves you. And when he says you can call on him, you're calling on him from a position of this God really loves you. And so redeeming something means to save it from sin or error or evil, or it means to regain or gain possession from something in exchange for a payment or by clearing a debt. There's a passage that goes on from this passage in Isaiah 43, 1, where he's saying, I've redeemed you, I've called your name, you're mine. I'd like to read that to you and, um, because I think it underlines how precious you are to God and why God insists that you can call on him comes from Isaiah 43, and it says this, I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade creation just for you. That's God speaking to his nation, Israel. When he was redeeming them, he was paying a price for them. And he was saying, you're so important. I love you so much. I'd trade all of creation. I'd sell the whole world for you. That's to illustrate you can call on him. He's your God. But for us, those of us who live 
in this new covenant, this new testament era, then God has paid a far higher price. He's to redeem you, he's paid with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Invaluable, immeasurable, the blood of Christ. And so really, he's, I'm wanting to underline for you, when he says, I'm your God, you're mine, he's saying you're precious and valuable to me. You, of course you can call on me when you're experiencing fear. Let's see what he goes on and says after that, after saying you're mine in Isaiah 41.3. He says, when you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. you see, he's expressing now, I'm, I love you. I'm not going to be far from you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end because I am God, your personal God. So we see here, what a, what a wonderful and comforting promise this is. So of course, our Redeemer who purchased us with the blood of Christ to whom we belong with whom we have a personal relationship, is fully committed to us in a loyal and loving covenant. So what does he promise? Well, he runs on through in this passage in Isaiah 41.10, and he says, I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I like the idea of the righteous right hand. It's right that God should uphold us so when you think you're going to drown he's saying you're not going to because i'm holding it's right that i hold you and sustain you and i think of the his righteous right hand also as jesus christ is on his right hand at his right hand often called his right hand and he is the one through which god helps us you see all our sin has been covered all our sin has been forgiven it's absolutely right that God should care for us and save us and rescue us. So I've tried to restate these five good reasons why we should not fear. And so let me read them to you. I'm not afraid because I'm not alone. God, my personal God, is with me. I won't look around anxiously looking for some way that I could be propped up wondering where I can find help because God who is fully committed to me in a loving relationship is my God. God will strengthen me when I'm weak. God will help me when I need help. God will uphold me when I'm rough and when I'm in rough waters, I can't sink because he is holding me up. You know, what things cause you to be afraid? You know, there are multiple things that cause us to be afraid. But we're all unique, so what's your fear? What is it that you're aware of that causes you to feel a sense of torment or, or a loss of confidence about life? You know, maybe it's social anxiety or possibly it's just the whole idea of sharing your faith. It might be as you take a test in school or as you face an interview for a job. It might be as you take a stand against injustice or as you confront some medical condition. Or, or it might be when you leave a secure position and you take a risk in a new venture. It might be when you face an operation or some treatment. It might be when you lose a spouse or a friend. It might be when your church changes leaders and embarks on a new path. It might be when you have a disagreement with others. But fear finds a way into all of us every day. So, you know, God calls you to be free of fear. He calls you to overcome fear and enjoy peace. But he doesn't leave that command hanging in the air as if you've somehow got to do that in your own strength. No, he gives you his promises and supports you wherever you will believe them and act on them. So that's the nature of a, a biblical command. They come with divine support. So the key to overcoming fear coming out of this passage is that you lean on the promises of God. If the key to courage is believing that God is your God and is with you and will strengthen you and help you and uphold you, then reminding ourselves of the greatness of God will intensify our faith and will give you courage. So I'd like to just choose one scripture to read to you about the greatness of God. It comes from Isaiah 40 verse 12. It says this, Who has scooped up the ocean 
in his hands, his two hands? Or who's measured the the sky between his thumb and and little finger? Who has put all the earth's dirt in one of his baskets and weighed each mountain and hill? What an incredibly great God we have. And yet, I'd like to remind you and myself, the same hand that did this creating holds you and supports you. You're not going under if you have faith in him. So this month has been about establishing stronger faith in God. And for two weeks, we've asked or invited you to join us in a fast. You see, fasting is a spiritual discipline that's revealed throughout the whole Bible. The principle of a fast is that you sacrifice something to pursue God. It means putting aside something that you think important because it feeds us in some way so that you can prioritize God and pursue him by prayer and spending intentional time in the Bible. You might say, oh, what should I fast? Well, I don't want to upset you, but say you come home after work every night and you enjoy a drink and that's how you relax and that's how you get peace. Well, possibly you could put the drink aside and you could go to God and find your peace and stillness in him. Or possibly you enjoy food, and food is your way of uh, feeling pleasure, your way of comforting yourself, and your way of uh, just zoning out. Perhaps you could forsake food and go to God and find Him as your peace and your comforter and your source. Or perhaps you love to put on movies because, you know, you can just blank yourself out. Perhaps you could go to God, leave those aside for this period of time and go to God and draw your release from him. That's what we're talking about fasting. We're talking about the real things in your life that you can put aside and bring and make God come center on the stage. You know, it's so important. I can't underline it enough. Some of us have this lottery mindset where we consider giving a minimum investment to God, hoping for a maximum return. You know, like putting 10 bucks into lotteries, buying a ticket and winning 10 million. Uh, But, you know, this is not the way any good relationship works. And it doesn't work like that with God. Matthew 17, 14 says this, The way to life to God is vigorous and requires total attention. So we're seeking in these two weeks to break the rut of complacency and fire our relationship with Christ, drawing closer to Christ and so gaining strength from him and breaking into Uh, our distractions and the various things that have taken us away from Christ. So, you know, as we draw near to God, fasting and reading our Bible, God will give us understandings and he'll give us breakthroughs. And so I would like to challenge you to bring to God the issues that cause you to be afraid. And I'd love to pray for you in a moment. But what are some of those things that you push down, you push away, they torment you, that are fear-based in your life. Can you bring them to God in this moment, in a moment when we pray? I want to challenge you to stop defining and limiting your future in terms of the past and start defining your life in terms of God and what He can do. I'd love to call you to recognize that God is greater than your personality. God is greater than your past experiences of fear and failure. God is greater than your concerns and your reservations and your negative thoughts about the future. You know, to quote a scripture that Jesus used, it says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe God. Come on, let's believe God. Let's trust God. Let's let God be our God. Let him help us. Let him be our strength. He will uphold us in his righteous right hand. So let me pray with you now. Let's come to God and respond to his word and his message. I'd have to pray with you, leading you in a prayer that brings our problems, our fears, our future before God. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you that you've given us such strong commands and then you've backed them up with such wonderful promises. And Lord, we want to take you up on that right now Since you have promised to be with us, since you've promised to be our God, 
since you've promised to strengthen us and to help us and to uphold us. Lord, we want to bring our fears to you. We want to bring the things that are really troubling us in this season, the things that are going on in our lives that are causing us to stress out, they're causing us to feel anxious, and they're causing us to respond in unusual ways to life. Lord, we want to give them to you, and we want to ask you to strengthen us, to overcome them. We want you to ask you to help us in the battle. And we want you to hold us up when the waters are troubled and we're afraid we're going to sink. We also want to bring our future to you, Lord. And we don't want our past to plague us into our future. But God, we want to believe in the future that you have for us, a future that's full of promise, a future that has full of hope, the future that brings us into your plans and your blessings. So, Father, forgive us how we've left negative thinking and fears and hard things from our past. Stop us from coming into all that you purpose us for the future. Bring us into that future, we pray, Lord. And Lord, help clear away the old experiences of failure. Help us put away the concerns and the reservations and the negative thinking. Help us embrace your word and your promise and your faith for all that you intend for our future. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, you might be listening too, and you don't know this God that I'm speaking of. And, and these promises really are for those who know God. You can call upon God in your times of trouble, but this is for a person who has relationship, personal relationship with God. And you might know all of the ravages of fear and all of the ravages of a past which has so disappointed you, full of failure and full of disappointment in the sense that your life hasn't gone anywhere. You know, God offers you a bright future. And today, if you're willing, you can surrender to God. You can ask God to forgive you based on what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. You can say, Lord, forgive me that I've ignored you in my life. I've lived my life in my own way, independently of you. And I know that I've blown many things. Based on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, I want to ask you to forgive me and receive me into relationship with you. You know, if you have done that, it's a wonderful thing. That's the beginning of a whole new journey. It's a thrilling journey. And it will take you away from being dominated by fear and bring you into a wonderful future of faith, living in relationship with the living God. So I'm so pleased. And uh, there are directions being given later. We'd love to hear your story. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you for giving time for the Word of God. I pray you have a great day. And don't forget to be a blessing wherever you are. God bless you. trust in you. We remember who you are. You're our God who made the universe and you're watching over us. We believe in you. We trust
Thank you, Pastor Norm, so much for that encouraging word. Um, we just hope everyone watching was really blessed by that. And especially to any of you that if you said yes to Jesus for the first time today, we are so excited for you. We're so happy and we would love to hear uh, your story. Um, one of the ways you could do that is to go onto our website, scroll down. There's a button that says, I said yes. You can click on that and yeah, just tell us your story. Tell us what God's doing in your life. And if you would like someone to get in contact with you, you can put your details in there and yeah, someone from the church will be in contact with you shortly. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, also, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank those who have been uh, faithfully contributing to the ministry of Ocean's Church. You know, we wouldn't be able to do things like this if yeah. it wasn't for your support. So thank you so much for your generosity. If you'd also like to give, there's different ways coming up on the screen now that you can do that. That's it for today. Thanks again for joining us. Hope you have a fantastic week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.